Hey guys, so I know I said the next video was going to be about 3D printing, and I will get to that one soon, but first I want to talk a little bit about this guy. Alright, so this is the Raspberry Pi 3B+. Plus. They just announced it about a week and a half ago, and I gotta say, on paper it seems like kind of a mixed bag in terms of upgrades. That's probably why they didn't call it the Raspberry Pi 4. The biggest upgrade is for the networking. It's got 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, as well as gigabit ethernet, but that's still running through the USB 2.0 interface, so even though it's a lot faster than the previous Pi, you're not gonna be able to max out that gigabit ethernet. The CPU is the same, but it's clocked at 1.4 gigahertz instead of 1.2, so a little bit faster there, but the graphics processor is exactly the same as on the Pi 3, but it does have about 20% better memory throughput, and that's the same memory that's feeding the GPU. So I'm thinking that'll help a little bit even though it's the exact same GPU otherwise. It's also got much better thermal and power management, as well as an integrated heat spreader. So those two things should mean that we see a lot less throttling of the CPU because of thermal constraints. So the question everybody was asking when this was announced is, is it worth upgrading if I already have a Raspberry Pi 3? More specifically, I wanted to know, is it worth upgrading for two specific use cases? Cases, running emulators using RetroPie and as a media player using Kodi. So I'm gonna run some tests and see how this compares to a Raspberry Pi 3 for both of those uses. So the first test I did was using this Raspberry Pi benchmark tool that I found and it's pretty simple and pretty cool. It calculates a bunch of prime numbers and does that both single and multi-threaded and then it copies a bunch of stuff around in memory to test how fast that is as well. And the results are about what you'd expect with every increase in clock speed, we see an increase in performance in the benchmark. These numbers represent how long it took to do each test, so lower scores are better. And remember, the base Pi 3 runs at 1.2 gigahertz. I also tested it overclocked to 1.3, and the base B plus is at 1.4, and then I have that overclocked to 1.55 gigahertz as well. And you can see there's almost a linear scaling of performance versus clock speed. So next, I wanted to test a couple of the systems that the Raspberry Pi 3 tends to struggle with. First I did N64, and here with Mario 64 you can see kind of the same pattern as on that benchmark. With every increase in clock speed we get a little bit better performance. But that pattern didn't hold up for GoldenEye. You'll notice that the 1.3 GHz Pi 3 is actually running a little bit better than the 1.4 GHz B+. I think that that's because the overclocked Pi 3 has its GPU overclocked by a little bit as well which tells me that this one is more GPU bound than CPU bound. And we see that same pattern here with Smash Brothers, which runs really well, by the way, almost 60 frames per second if you're running it on an overclocked Pi 3 or B+. And next I tested PSP, and we're seeing that same pattern here with Need for Speed Underground. And same thing with Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars as well. But this one is actually pretty playable. And by the way, with both these emulators, I didn't do any tweaking of the settings or anything like that. I just used out of the box settings for those emulators. So you could probably make a lot of these games playable if you turned on frame skipping and did some other tweaking. But interestingly, that pattern did not hold up with Wipeout Pulse. I'm not sure if it was just a fluke or if this game is more limited by the CPU speed rather than the GPU. So you can see that yes, overall the B+, especially if it's overclocked, is faster than the Pi 3. It's not a huge difference, it's certainly not enough to make any games that were previously unplayable suddenly playable, but you do get a few extra frames per second and every little bit helps. So that should give you a pretty good idea of the emulation performance that you can expect out of the B+, and how it compares to the original Pi 3. Now let's take a look at how the two boards compare as a media player using Kodi. The Pi 3 was actually a pretty good media player already. I don't think I have a single video in my library that it just can't play because of performance limitations. The biggest thing holding it back in my opinion was its Wi-Fi performance. If I wanted to stream anything even relatively high bitrate from my server, I had to either use Ethernet, which limits where you can put it in the house, or use a third-party USB Wi-Fi adapter, which kind of defeats the purpose of having built-in Wi-Fi. So here's an example of what I mean, one of my favorite movies, and keep an eye on this number here at the top. This is the number of frames that it's skipped since it started playing the video. This is on the original Pi 3 over Wi-Fi, and you can see it's just skipping frames all over the place makes the video stutter quite a bit and it's just not very fun to watch. And here's the same clip running over Wi-Fi on the B+, and that one skipped frame that it has was from when it first started buffering and playing, but after that I didn't see it drop a single one after I started playing. 
so a huge improvement. And then just for good measure, I tested transferring a large file over the network using SFTP. And over ethernet, I got almost a 50% increase in speed for the B plus compared to the original Pi 3. And then over Wi-Fi, it's over double the speed of the original Pi 3. So these are just my results on my network. Your mileage may vary, but overall it's a pretty big improvement. All right, so back to the original question. Is it worth upgrading if you already have a Raspberry Pi 3? And the answer is, it kind of depends on what you're gonna do with it. Yes, it's faster across the board, especially when it comes to networking, but it also uses quite a bit more power than the Pi 3. In fact, the Raspberry Pi Foundation now recommends a 2.5 amp power supply compared to the 2.1 amp that they recommend for the Pi 3. And sure enough, I kept an eye on how much power it was using while I was running that benchmark, and the B Plus spiked quite a bit higher than the Pi 3. That said though, the B Plus does run quite a bit cooler without any heat sink or fan. Here's a side by side of the two running the benchmark and you can see that the B plus is running about 10 degrees cooler than the Pi 3. So I would say if you plan on using this plugged into a TV powered off of a wall outlet then yes it's definitely worth upgrading if for no other reason than just the faster networking. It makes it so the integrated Wi-Fi is actually useful and you can transfer large sets of ROMs a lot faster. But if you're planning on using it in a portable setting powered off of a battery it's probably not worth it. The performance increases that you get aren't huge, and if it's a portable, you're not likely to be using the faster networking nearly as often. So in that case, I'd probably stick with the original Pi 3. All right, guys, I think that about does it. If you've been wondering about the new Raspberry Pi, then I hope this helped you. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below or stop by the forums. Don't forget to enter to win a set of quad hands. I still have that giveaway going and I've actually extended it by a few days. So check the description. I'll have a link to where you can enter to win one of these. And as always, thanks for watching, guys and I'll see you next time.